Okay, so this is part two of the Nobology talk. So what I'm going to talk about today is some of the more advanced B mode settings. First of all, I'm going to talk about multiple focusing. Now, we always want to have our focus in the right place, and you can see it on the screen as the little arrow there. And I can, using this button here, I can move the arrow up and down. And what this does is it improves lateral resolution at the point that the focus is at. So you always want the focus at the area of interest. And this is where it will give us the best lateral resolution. Now what I can do is I can increase the number of focal zones which gives us a wider area of good lateral resolution. So if I turn this button here, as you can see now on the screen, it is giving me two arrows. And what this means is that I will have a higher resolution across a wider area. There is a trade-off though. So if I just, and I'll explain that now, if I just come back to the one focal zone, and if we look over here, we'll see that this, what this means is that the frame rate is presently set on 20 frames per second. And as we discussed in the, the first video, if we have a frame rate of 20 frames per second, we have a real time moving image. So as I move this probe, we can see that the image is keeping up with my hand. Okay, and that's what we want. Now, if I then increase the focal zones, look what happens with the frame rate. It reduces to 10. Now, if I move my hand, the image is no longer keeping up. And as I move quickly, the image doesn't keep up. And as I move, you can see a nice reverberation artifact there, right in the center of the screen. But as I move, the image is not keeping up with my hand. And that is something called temporal resolution. Temporal resolution is the ability to see and to actually resolve a moving object. And then if we are keeping our, if we're just moving the probe around 20, mega, 20 frames per second is perfectly fine. If we have a higher, uh, faster moving structure, structure such as the fetal heart, then we need to have a, a high frame rate. Okay, so, what, so that is, so let's just go back to focusing. So as we can see, I can move these arrows up and down, and I put those at the point of interest, and it gives us a beautiful resolved image, but we have to be aware that it will reduce our frame rate. If we really do want to have an area that we can resolve very well, such as if we wanted to scan the fetal heart, so if I go into the area of the chest, this phantom doesn't doesn't have a heart. Okay, but if we come now, we can just imagine the actual stomach there is the fetal heart. Okay, one thing we can do is we can reduce the sector width, which on this machine is called the scan range, just here. But if I narrow this down reduce the scan range of the sector width and look and see what happens to the frame rate. So as we reduce the frame rate, as we re re reduce the sector width, the frame rate increases. Other things that affect the frame rate are the depth. If I increase, if I decrease the depth, the frame rate increases and as I increase the depth, the frame rate decreases. And these are all reasons why we always have to optimize the image. They may not seem, Im seem Im 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 important at, at first, but all of these settings are all in interlinked, so we always have to optimize the image. So I'm going to increase the scan range again now. And I'm going to go back to one focal zone. So what, what we've talked about there is temporal resolution and 
multiple focus. Another thing we can talk about, we'll just reduce that, I'll just decrease that. And what we'll talk about now is that range. Okay, so dynamic range. All of these returning echoes which come back to the probe, what happens is that the machine has to decide whether it's going to make that image black, white, or grey. Okay. And that's what the dynamic range does. So the dynamic range is this button here. Dynamic range. All machines will have it. And what I can do is I can give me make it a, a narrow dynamic range what this means is all of the from these returning echoes basically the um, uh, the uh, machine has to decide if, if it's going to make it black white or a shade of gray and if you've got a narrow dynamic range it makes it very simple it either makes it black white or gray so if I turn around now now what you can see here is that the image is very black and white, it's what, what we call very contrasty, but if you notice we do get nice sharp crisp borders. And if I look at this stomach again, see how easy it is to actually define that. So a narrow dynamic range is very good if you just want to see borders and if you want to see black and white structures. But it's no good if we want to see a wide range of structures, such as being able to differentiate between the kidneys and the diaphragm and the stomach and the different parts of the brain. So the opposite of a narrow dynamic range is a wide dynamic range. And immediately we see that this image is much greyer. We can now start resolving all these different structures. But the trade-off of this is that the borders are not as sharp. The anterior wall doesn't look as sharp. That, that um, uh, stomach there doesn't look as sharp but we do get this wide shade of greys. Now in reality, the dynamic range is a bit like the political spectrum. Yeah, you don't want to be to right to the far right, because you don't want to be a fascist. You don't want to be to the far left, because they're communists. Middle of the road is boring, but what, what, what you want to be is either to the left or the right of the centre. And dynamic range is pretty much exactly the same. Okay? So if you want, if you know that what you want to do is you want to look at borders, if you want to look at actually borders, then you put it to the black and white side of the centre. If you want to look at a wide shade of greys, you move it to the wider side of the, of the centre. So let's just see what I mean by that. So that's really black and white, we don't like that. But as we start moving it towards the centre, okay, with that is a nice trade-off between seeing the shades of greys and being able to differentiate borders. And that is dynamic range. And that is the end of this video.